guest today is Peter Leeson. Peter, how are you? Right in yourself, David. I'm doing very well, thank, thank you. you. Um, now, we're at uh, Technical Commerce, the IT camp here in Romania, but uh, you've made it clear that you're not a technical person. I am not a technical person. I'm a management consultant, a quality process, all this stuff, but don't ask me what's happening inside a compiler. I don't know. <laughs> well, don't ask me either, actually. Uh, but uh, those, of course, they had your keynote. They did. They did. I gave a presentation last year, which was apparently voted the most interesting presentation at the conference. So I they gave me that. a keynote. Mm -hmm. I, I said it was just because I was the old, oldest person here, but <laughs> there was actually another reason. <laughs> I have that to look forward to just in a couple of years. <laughs> the, um, uh, so I saw your keynote. It was excellent. It was about uh, managing fear, I think was yes. the, the, the title of it, something like that. Uh, but I couldn't get into your second session, which was today, because the room was overflowing. There were people stealing chairs from the room next door. Yes, I <laughs> owe an apology to the other three speakers who were <laughs> on at the same time. Yeah, and for the, to the seven people that were in their session. <laughs> got no place to sit. <laughs> but uh, what, so, um, so what was the topic of the second one? Uh, the, the topic of the second one was the, the challenge. I, I called it the battle for success, uh, meaning what does success mean within a company? How do you try to make it happen? Um, what happens when management is not on the same wavelength as the engineers and so on? Hmm. Short term versus long term. Okay. Uh, so you're talking about cultural change within an organization? Yes, cultural change. So um, very I'm, I, I, I'm a very strong believer in the fact that if you uh, develop a quality product and you develop a quality product all the way through the life cycle, you are sig significantly reducing both the cost and the time to market. And companies that try to reduce their costs or their time to market without focusing on quality usually end up doing the opposite of what they expected. Okay. So this, I, it's nothing new. I mean, Deming, Sherwood were promoting the same concepts uh, early last century, so. Yeah, well, I don't think there's any organization that wouldn't claim to be focusing on quality. I mean, that's, uh, that's at least given lip service. They Pretty all. Much everywhere. They all say quality. They all talk about quality. And then, if I ask them what they're actually measuring, they're telling me money and time to market. Interesting. And so I say, all right. Does that mean that cheap and early is high quality? Well, no. So then, what is quality? Well, we don't really know. Ah. So what is quality? That's the big <laughs> question. And I expect companies to be able to define quality for themselves. Um, ah. So it's different from every organization. Yes. You. You. Are you just a software company among a hundred million other software companies, or is there something special about your company that I will be proud to say my software comes from there because they've got something extra? Sure. And that might be cheap, and it might be zero defect, and it might mean more colors on the screen. I don't know. Whatever it is, what is the added feature you bring? Mm to your customers. Okay, so, so where does uh, change management fit into that? Change management is typically, um, most companies, we need to try to change the attitude of people um, because there is still a very short-term look out for most people of thinking, I pay my bills this month and that's it. Um, I again heard today about a company where management is pushing to start development as soon as possible rather than thinking it through before starting. And therefore, people are busy working on three different projects at the same time mm. because if you've started earlier, then you'll deliver earlier. And that's not true. Mm. And we've got measurements to prove that. And it's very easy to demonstrate that working on three different things at the same time, all three take significantly longer than if you do them sequentially. And so it's just trying to get through the concept that things can be measured and using measures correctly in order to promote the efficiency of the approach along the lines of uh, lean management and so on will make things happen. Okay, I think of lean management, I think of uh, just-in-time inventory and things like that. Yes. I don't, does that apply to software development? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the basic principles of uh, lean management are largely found within the agile approach and scrum approach to mm -hmm. development. It's basically an adaptation of lean. 
except that um, the scrum organizations, the agile organizations, are usually focusing on a very small part of their development cycle, which is the scrum cycle. Mm. And once you add in the management and the sales and the customer relationships, it's chaotic and an enormous waste of time and money. And so trying to bring it out of the small team-based agile community into the larger organization is for me something critical at this point. Hmm. So I'm not, I'm unclear as to whether you're in favor of agile methodologies or suspicious of them. I'm in favor of Agile. I think okay. Agile is, is, is a brilliant approach. Um, I, I'm, I am a CMMI person by trade, but I'm very strongly in favor of Agile. I think Agile works beautifully if it is done correctly, if it's wow. not just seen as an excuse not to do anything. <laughs> um, but even when it is done correctly, it's usually dumped in the middle of a company which is still in a mess. Uh, so cleaning up the mess is, uh, is critical then yes, to uh, it's implementing Agile correctly. Where uh, following the process that get the requirements from the end user to the Agile team, just that is sometimes mind-boggling. That How is it possible that they got misunderstood to this extent? Hmm. Uh, that's, of course, the key point of any Agile. There's a lot of Agile is sort of an overloaded term these days. People yes. throw it around... Uh, so it's almost become meaningless. But for me, when I think of Agile, I think of this fast feedback. Mm -hmm. Either succeed fast or fail fast. Yes. Get that feedback and say, all right, well, we, we spent a day doing that wrong. At least we didn't spend a month doing it wrong. Let's fix it now. Except that we then break it down because we don't have the fast feedback from the customer. We have the fast feedback from the customer representative okay. who happens to be the sales guy rather than actually someone representing the customer. And that's where it all breaks down. And because that's a you're, you're getting internal feedback rather than actual feedback on the quality of what you're doing. Okay. Um, well, let's bring it back to the, the change management you talked about. What's, uh, what's the message there? What was the message you were talking about? Uh, the message is that um, there, is b there are better ways of doing things. I am a very strong believer that in order to produce quality, in other words, in order for people to be productive and creative at work, which is what the definition of quality at work means, they have to be happy in their work environment. And so even though I'm a process consultant, I've uh, been promoting uh, an approach for the past few years, which is called forget process, focus on people where it is very much the concept of getting the people working for you happy in their work environment, removing the obstacles, removing the impediments that are giving them frustration on a daily basis and make things happen. Now, this is a message that doesn't come across very well to management in most companies mm. who uh, still have, um, I don't want to say slave labor, but it's still very much a concept of you just do your job and deliver a product sure, rather than think thinking think about being happy. The, the, the salary, the wages are sufficient incentive yeah. to do whatever they're told. Yes, and yeah. salaries are never an incentive. That's yeah, they're, uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to dismiss them. I mean, everybody needs to Oh, eat. they need it. They need uh, it. It's the first uh, thing you need is a living wage. I mean, it's sure. a salary to allow you to live comfortably, to feed your family, to have proper education and mm. uh, to pay your taxes. So once you get that level of uh, Maslow's pyramid, <laughs> yep. then it becomes less of an incentive. Yes, I actually used within the talk the um, Maslow's pyramid on your uh, business needs, okay. which works very nicely, and which ends up at the top level of trust between management and staff. Mm. Uh, so in your experience, you're, you're going into companies and you're, you're delivering these messages. Are, are, is management receptive to that? Are, are you delivering it at the top? Are you delivering it at the middle manager level? Or I'm how do you make implement change? I'm trying to get into the top. So in most companies, I'm called in as a CMMI lead appraiser and so on and just give us, give us a maturity level and leave us alone. And then I start talking to them about what is actually needed and I try to get up to the top. Um, I would say that over half the management teams I talk to are well receptive and actually are happy to listen to what I'm saying and to try and make something happen and understand the principles of quality as I'm trying to push it. Some of them are not. And if they're not, then I try to get the staff to change things from the bottom. I see. Which okay. is perfectly possible. Sure. Trying to improve your own work environment 
uh, rather than just laying out, rolling over and playing dead and <laughs> saying, okay, I'll, I'll let them beat me up until I find another job. No, that's an interesting question. So I think a lot of my viewers are not CEOs. They're just, they're doing their job. They come to work and, uh, <laughs> but they may want to change things. What, what can people do to improve the quality and of uh, their own work conditions? Um, first of all, focus on the value that you're creating. Um, we, we've always measuring cost, we're very rarely measuring value. Understand the value of what you're doing, understand what you are actually creating rather than what you are costing, and help people understand that. Um, I'm, I would like to, to encourage management teams, not necessarily CEOs, but it starts at that level, to start rewarding their people with training with education mm -hmm. rather than with a salary raise. Okay. In other words, that increases the value of the person. It awakens them. We, we're talking, we're talking uh, in the software industry, we are talking about highly intelligent people. These are people who are doing an intellectual creative job. They have got above average intelligence that has to be respected. These are people who want to learn, who want to be challenged, That's who want key. to progress. People don't get into this business unless they want to learn. Yeah. And just getting them to do their nine to five because they're d earning a good salary doesn't work. Uh, bored software developer will not produce any good work. You have to keep the right level of stress so as to challenge them, to push them a little bit further, to educate them, to give them something they want and not just the minimum they need to do their job. Mm, okay. Um, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Oh my God, you want me to talk for the next three <laughs> days? I can do that. <laughs> um, I have a plan to catch in three days, so probably not. <laughs> uh, but are you, now I know you're speaking about these topics. Are you writing about them as well? I do have a blog, which. Um, you say that like it's not up to date, is that? Oh, it is, it okay. is, it is. No, the, the thing is, I have been speaking for the past five years about the famous book I'm writing. And oh, uh, the book. <laughs> it's still it's still just a concept. Okay. Um, slowly, slowly it's coming together. The, um, I, I think I've generally got the flow now as to what I want to put in it. Okay. So I uh, hope to get it. But otherwise, the blog is at my website at qpit.net. Excellent. Peter, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>